Okay guys, I'm back again. Uh, here's what this video is supposed to be on. My new solar panels and new wiring and stuff that I was supposed to be doing. Um, let me first explain what I have here. 125 amp out, not amp hour, but 125 uh, watt solar panel. Not a amp hour, I'm thinking of the battery right now. 100 watt solar panel and 85 watt solar panel, all manufactured by UL Solar. Uh, paid quite a bit of money for these, as you can imagine. Uh, the largest panel cost me about 200 bucks. The uh, middle one there, I actually got a really good deal on because it was an auction, and luckily enough, not a lot of people were bidding, so I only paid 130 dollars for a 100 watt panel. And the third one here, the smallest one, was actually more expensive than 100 watt. This is an 85 watt uh, panel. They're all 12 volts. And that one cost me about 150 bucks. So I had bought those panels, uh, not expecting my battery to fail. Uh, this is really disappointing uh, because I am a battery nut. I maintain my batteries like crazy. I desulfate them. I equalize the batteries every three months or as needed. Um, I also make sure my electrolyte levels are are normal. I try not to deep cycle them, bring them lower than the 12 volt range. Uh, they have very few cycles on them, maybe about 20 or 30 cycles per uh, battery here. And that one's still performing good, it's just this one that failed. Um, and it failed unexpectedly because I do check my batteries every day when I get off work, come in, hook up my multimeter to them, make sure they're holding 12.7 volts, make sure that they were uh, nicely charged. And um, the battery is also uh, load tested. You know, I load tested this battery a couple of weeks ago and it passed with flying colors. So what I think happened to it is that a uh, cell shorted out on me. Uh, basically on the left hand side here is where I saw the failure. You can see where the uh, remnants of the acid squirting out um, were. Right hand side here, not a lot of that. Uh, no corrosion or anything like that because the battery, again, was well maintained. And I think the center cell there shorted out. I came in, really funky odor. Uh, wasn't the typical failure smell, which would be rotten eggs or a sulfur smell. And I've definitely had some batteries fail on me over the years. Uh, and I've smelled that. But this wasn't that. This was a musty, damp mildew basement smell which was really weird I'm not too sure if that's you know the beginning of the sulfur smell or not uh, but I caught the battery early it was uh, it was I believe it was either Friday at early afternoon or something like three o'clock that's when I uh, when I caught the battery I was off work that day and basically I got that weird smell heard the hissing and saw that the battery was squirting acid all inside of the box and uh, venting pretty violently. So, uh, luckily, last time I did wiring on the system, which was a little over a year ago, I installed a uh, battery disconnect switch, the little uh, blue box there that basically disconnects the charge controller from the solar panels in case of an emergency. So, first thing I did was flip that switch and then slowly pry up the vent cap to uh, release the pressure on the cell before any type of explosion could happen. Uh, really disappointing three-year-old battery. These batteries really should go anywhere from four to six years. With my extreme maintenance, you know, desulfation and, uh, and equalizing the cells properly, you know, I'm expecting even longer than that. So three years is unacceptable. Uh, Cell shorted out, that's probably due to a poor manufacturing process, crappy layup plates or something like that. So I probably won't be buying another Walmart EverStart battery. Uh, not that they're bad or anything. I've had a good experience with my Group 24, which uh, is a little bit smaller of a battery, less capacity. It's 105 amp hours. That's a 125 amp or, or was a 125 amp hour battery. And so far, the um, 105 amp hour battery has been working well. It's actually had better performance, slightly better performance than that one. Uh, but this one wasn't giving me any signs that it was failing. You know, there weren't any weird smells up until a couple of 
days ago, uh, had invented before like that. Uh, it was just because, you know, it finally just shorted out that it failed. So, what I'm thinking is I'm going to try either getting an AGM battery to hook up to the system. This system is running off 100 watts of solar. It's also tied with a uh, grid tie inverter. Um, that wattage could change, especially since, you know, I have my new solar panels here. But, um... I'm going to probably try an AGM battery if I can get one from a battery distributor at a really discounted price. Maybe look at some used or a blemish battery uh, because the solar panels I bought and uh, you know didn't expect the battery to fail so I already spent my money. Uh, and I can get blemish or used batteries for around $35 to $40 a pop with core deposit. And... Um, you know, it's definitely a lot less than paying, you know, $150, $200 for an AGM battery. I already have one that's pretty beefy. I have a uh, newer, well, it was brand new. It's about six months old now, but still in a new condition. A 100 amp hour UPS battery. Uh, but that one, again, is designed for UPS. So I want to get a jail cell that's designed for solar because those won't dry out as uh, easily as the regular AGM batteries uh, or you know if I can't find those because I haven't talked with that distributor yet I have talked with the interstate battery distributor in my area and I've already um, had them look up their inventory they do have some used group 27 and uh, group 24 batteries I can pick up for relatively cheaply and they're in good condition they're uh, load testing everything they'll probably last a pretty long time so might end up picking up some of those. They're um, just regular flooded lead acid batteries. But just to need to get something to hold me over until I can save up for a uh, brand new good quality battery. So that's just what I want.